All right, Sarah and I are back here. We got Beatrice, we got a car full of stuff, a trestle table, sawdust for the toilet, kindling wood from the shop, um, more trim. So we're gonna start a fire and then we'll get checked back in with you when we get back inside. Hey. Why are you barking? You wanna be out here with us? You look very scary, Beatrice. Very scary. Hey. All right, so we got kind of unpacked and we got a fire going. And now we've got to get the trestle table in here and probably it's getting dark, probably tomorrow I'll put up the trim. So we're gonna move the trestle table in now and get that box out of there. One, two. glad I left that little opening there. It's a, it's a tight squeeze. <laughs> it's kind of cool when the sun hits it, huh? Uh -huh. It was actually meant to go further in, but I don't think we can really push it in further and still be able to get back there. It's, it's not. I mean... Uh, can we still open the drawers? That was my other hope. It was the reason I did a trestle table instead of a Yeah, that's good. Sweet. That's going to be well, so nice. There it is, in place. Getting festive. So when I started building this cabin in 2014, this is exactly what I had in mind. Sarah, my dog, a fire, and a cold winter night. So it's the first morning, Christmas Eve morning, and this is Tika bread and it's one of the traditions from Sarah's family. She's Hungarian, Czech, Polish, Slovak, and a lot of other countries from over there. Um, and so this is one thing that we have. I'm curious to hear if your family does anything interesting for the holidays. Let me know in the comments. Sarah's family calls this nut roll and it's it's not in a circular thing like this it's a it's a longer skinnier um, uh, roll. pastry roll that's called a bunt pan yeah it's not in a bunt pan when her family makes it we we bought this because her brother's the expert and uh, we're not <laughs> with them usually he does the making of the nut roll Sarah's brother who was here for the hunting video learned it from Sarah's grandmother granny Annie and there it is on the inside. You can see all the nut and filling. I had some time in the shop, so I made trim for this door and more importantly, the window over the table. So I wanna get that installed now. It 
So when I bought these windows, I had no idea what kind of wall I was gonna put up. I didn't know if I was gonna do drywall, pine, whatever. And so what I ended up using was a quarter inch um, thicker than what these are made for, but that's easily solved by ripping down some quarter inch strips in the shop and staining them. So I'm gonna put these in so I don't have a gap. couple videos back I was shooting trim nails and uh, I got some tips that I already knew but I should have mentioned for the benefit of everyone else and that is if you shoot these sideways they're much less likely almost not likely at all to, to blow out so if you shoot them like this um, they might go up or down All right, well, I'm gonna do the rest and then I'll turn the camera back on when we start doing the trim. I found this really cool piece of spalted walnut. If you wanna know the secret to beautiful wood, you gotta go to the lumberyard and wait till the woodworkers have picked all the good stuff out and you go in there and buy all the garbage for half price because that wood with figuring and knots and stuff, woodworkers don't like it because it moves. It moves more than than straight grain wood. Um, but for trim, what, what do you care? It just needs to sit on the wall and look pretty. That's its only job. If it cups or twists a little bit, it's still gonna look pretty. So I thought it was kind of cool to use this live edge bit. I don't like a ton of live edge, but this to me was kind of subtle and it kind of blended into the table nicely. So I think that came out nice. All right, let's get the rest of this stuff up. Uh, this is a neat composition, isn't it? With all these leading lines, the shelves and the, that shelf and the beams and the table. It's kind of neat. I don't think you're supposed to talk about that stuff when you film, but I, I think I do a lot of stuff wrong on YouTube. <laughs> I've been noticing a lot of channels that are just kind of blowing past me and subscribers and I'm kind of puzzled as to why, but I don't know, all I can do is do what I do. Um, so if you do like my videos and this content, I'd really appreciate it if you su subscribed and check back again later to see how this all turned out. See what I mean about moving? This thing just probably bowed, or yeah, bowed about a, a quarter or an eighth of an inch just in the time that I milled it. There's things you can do to avoid that. You can, you can. There's. I'm not going to talk about them, but there is ways to minimize that movement. I just was in a rush. <laughs> No nails in there. I'm thrilled with how this came out. I love the way the walnut looks against the whitewashed pine. Um, technically, those uh, corners are supposed to line up with the uh, side pieces, but it's very hard to make the stuff in the shop and then come here and realize that you're, you didn't install your windows perfectly plumb. So um, it's got a little bit of an overhang, but I still think it looks good. It just doesn't match the rest of them, which I don't care about. So, so I made the tops of the cabinets from one continuous board and I've got it here so I figure might as well put that on now too. 
All right, so I've got a, cut a leftover cut off from the window. Um, I'm gonna use it to space these down. And I made these little homemade drawer pulls. I just dovetailed them in. It's really no different than a half blind dovetail on a uh, drawer side, but I'll show you really quick how I did them. And I've got a groove underneath so you can grab it. That's pretty cool. All right, that's pretty cool, I think. And uh, that's maple. The countertop's maple. Um, the table is maple. The table base is maple, but they're all from different trees, so they, they look different, but they're all maple. Um, so we'll make uh, three more drawer fronts and some more doors. And I'm waiting to do that because Burgess is getting a resaw bandsaw, so. I'm not going to cut those doors because I'm going to use the leftover spalted maple. I'm going to resaw it and use it for panels. I'm not going to put the trim up for the door this week because my shims are the right size on one side, but on the other side, they need to be another quarter of an inch thick. <laughs> Whoops. These are mugs from Mike's Aunt Jennifer. I say Aunt Jennifer because I'm from Ohio, but Mike being from Massachusetts says Aunt Jennifer all the way from near her home in Maine. Thought these were beautiful pottery that we'd want on display. Who was that made by? Rose. Rose. Our friend Rose? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> I should probably know that, huh? Um, I was going to put it up here, but I intend to put garlic in it. So garlic, you need to have a bit more accessible so it'll be resting on the kitchen sill. <laughs> the, the pineapple has nothing to do with our holiday traditions just our super nice neighbor just gave it to us so that's why we have a pineapple christmas pineapple yes <laughs> tris is uh doing a good job holding down the floor good job buddy so my mom got us a set of corral wear for the cabin mostly because she knows how clumsy we are and these are supposed to be uh, a little bit more resistant to breaking. So we just got some white dishes. I thought those would look nice um, sitting out any time of the year. You can always dress them up, yeah. um, but this isn't meant to be a fancy cabin. <laughs> I think this is pretty fancy actually. And we like white. We also like white because you can plate almost anything in it and it looks nice. So the trend is we're not really buying new stuff. We are just uh, putting gifts we've received and um, stuff that we've had but haven't really had a place for it in our really small house. We have a 1100 square foot house So we just don't have a lot of space for a lot of things, but now we can put this stuff down here Ooh. Dumbledore I've been reading Harry Potter finally, 
So now I call her Dumbledore, even though that doesn't make sense because that's the smartest wizard. She's not the smartest, but that's what but I call her. <laughs> kind of slippery. Ooh, careful. It's a good thing that <clears throat> Michael and Patrick aren't here for Christmas Eve because I wouldn't want to make them cry on Christmas when I beat them and took it to ride. Mm. Hear that? Michael and Patrick, Aunt Sarah's publicly talking trash. Zug on zug. This is a Stina family Loopy beans. holiday tradition. You don't like the pepper on them? <laughs> they need salt. Usually they're salty. Mm. Mm. I haven't had it in so long. Sarah, who do you think won? <laughs> I hate you. I never used to lose to her, and then she asked me, how are you so good at this game? And I told her what I did, and I haven't beat her since. Never tell your wife how you are good at board games. <laughs> are you gloating? She won. Bye. But I'm not counting. <laughs> yes, I'm you counting. are. Yes, you are. <laughs> Alright, so my family has a lot of Christmas traditions that are impossible to do down here, but two of them that I'm prepared for is antipasto and olia olia. So any pasta, there's no right or wrong way to make it. You gotta have some lettuce and you gotta have some cheese and some meat and you gotta have some pickled or cured or bottled stuff. So we got roasted red peppers, artichokes, garlic mushrooms, uh, stuffed peppers with cheese in them, garlic olives. I don't even think we've ever done that before but I saw them and I like them so I got them and hot pepperoncinis. And then the meats, pepperoni, salami, prosciutto, uh, this is mortadella. Normally we put a cup of gold too, but I, Kroger stopped selling that. And then we got some Asiago and what was this? This was uh, imported provolone. So, and then for a dessert, my favorite was always Tyrone. Sarah doesn't like it. I love this stuff. Um, Your mom then, just makes so many things that are way better than Tyrone, in yeah. my opinion. And we do, we also usually do like baked haddock or cod and some other stuff, but I just can't do it. We don't even have an oven here, so we can't do that stuff. The olia olia, I don't know if I'm gonna make it or not because we're almost out of water. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. So, um, do you wanna explain what that is? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's like a fish red sauce. It's really good. Um, it's gonna sound gross, but you dissolve anchovies in a red sauce that's made with tomato paste, water, and olive oil. And you, you don't have to use extra virgin olive oil. Um, that's just what I have. You can use cheaper olive oil. If anyone can guess what our favorite Christmas movie is, please put it in the comments. We are giving a very big hint right here. <laughs> Beatrice is licking me. Stop licking me, buddy. All right, and here it is. Once you get it looking pretty, you eat it. And All right, everyone, well, we're gonna enjoy our dinner. We hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and a Happy any other holiday you may celebrate. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year.
All right, well, that's all we managed, so this is gonna feed us for like four more meals. I have two good friends who have both been down here helping me build this cabin. Uh, one is my friend Jay, who helped me put in the wood stove. He's been on the, on the channel. And the other is my friend Arch, who helped me put up Tyvek and siding and work on my water system a little bit. Both of them have started their own channels and um, I've been kind of helping them a little bit. Not a lot, but you know, they're, they're just bouncing ideas off me. And, and they both got to the point where their channels are good. And I enjoy watching them. I'm gonna put a link so to, to Jay's channel right here. He, his cabin is really cool. He built his own siding. And then I'll put a link to Arch's channel also. He built a tiny house on top of a hill. It's really neat. So I'm gonna link both of those channels. I'd love it if you checked them out. I think you'll like them, especially if you like this channel. It's kind of very similar. And then on that note, I have upgraded some camera equipment. And I have my old Canon Nifty 50 uh, 50 millimeter 1.8 and what this lens does is it lets you um, get a blurry background and it has a it has a large aperture so a way to explain that is if you look at your finger and then let your mind wander to the things behind it um, that stuff behind your finger is blurry um, you can do that with this lens so what I would like to do since I have the new one I'd like to give this away to a small channel so if you know of a small channel that you think could use this Put a comment and I'll read them. Or if you are a small channel and you shoot Canon, let me know and I will pick one of the comments and send this out to you. Well, we got a white Christmas. Santa brought us some nice stuff and we're gonna pack up and head home pretty soon. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.